engage. For years, both friends and family of Jessica O'Brien have wondered about this cryptic, esoteric figure. Yeah, I met him maybe twice. The only thing I know about the guy, is he's half Chinese and he drives like a maniac. He seems nice, but the whole situation is a little bizarre. I mean, he's like a cartoon character. I, I never see him change his clothes. Who is this John Gates person? Why is Jessica so infatuated with him? Is he just using Jessica as an after-work booty call, or are they truly in love? And why is Jessica so fucking bonkers? In the next seven to ten minutes, we will delve deep into this baffling, bizarre situation on Mystery Figure Unveiled. December 6th, 2001. Jamie was celebrating his 21st birthday at a tourist trap in Times Square, a suggestion made by his fake uncle, Brian McKenna. It was a joyous occasion. However, a mist of uneasiness loomed overhead as friends and family were puzzled by the presence of an unknown group of Spanish people sitting at Jamie's table. Why are they all Spanish? I don't know. Yeah, so you're married. <laughs> yes, I'm married. I think that's really hot. Yeah. yeah. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. You have no ring on. <laughs> I take it off while I'm doing my business. Who are these people? Like, uh, you know all these Spanish people? I don't know. No. I don't know any Spanish people. Usually the only Spanish person here. And your beard. Just who were these people? <laughs> how did they get there? And how do they know Jamie? Stop, Pooh. Yeah, I remember that night. I was enjoying some chicken fingers when I looked over and like, who are these tan people? Who the fuck are those people? It was all very strange. I mean, we didn't invite these people. Who are they? But I later on found out that they were Jessica's friends from work and she invited them. Why she invited them to my son's 21st birthday, I really don't know. But little did they know, among the group was Jessica's secret love, John Gage. Where did this man come from? The Burkharts got more familiar with John Gage one winter day. Making one of her classic random pop-in visits, Jessica introduced the family to her newest fling. Hi, what are you guys doing here? Yeah, I'm installing a mirror on my ceiling. Okay. James, Jessica and her special friend are here and they need a screwdriver. Thanks, thanks, thanks. We'll be using this. During a hand tool transaction, John met eyes with an Entertainment Weekly magazine featuring actress Monica Bellucci on the cover. Whoa, it was that, that John confessed his opinions on the busty, buxom, dark-haired actress. Her hands are so big, she's got strike-like hands. Woo. He saw this magazine and he started rambling about how beautiful she was and how she was really tall and had paws like a Rottweiler. What do the giant Shrek-like hands of Monica Bellucci tell us about John Gage? We ex aspiring actress Ira Roma Shevslovsky to give her thoughts on the situation. I thought this was an addition for a short film. The whole visit was very strange. I mean, first Jessica shows up randomly with some strange fellow. He asks Jamie to borrow a screwdriver to put a shelf up for Jessica. Then he rambles on like a horny teenager about some Amazonian actress. What the hell? As strange as the visit was, it would only get stranger. During the summer of 2005, word had gotten around from Jessica that her business beau was preparing to shoot an independent film in Puerto Rico and was seeking the camera expertise of Jamie. I heard some crazy rumors that he wanted me to fly in a helicopter and over Puerto Rico or some sh crazy shit. Um, but the point is, I lent the guy a screwdriver that I never get back and all of a sudden, I'm his cinematographer. A few weeks later, Jamie met up with John Gates at the Belmont Steaks restaurant, which, by the way, does not serve steaks, to discuss the filmmaking opportunity. Meeting went well. I mean, he seemed serious about it. You John Gates? Yeah, you Jamie? Yeah. You banging Jessica? Yeah. Cool. Very. But this is a Jessica deal. 
and Jessica deals are like rainbows. No matter how close you get to them, you can never touch them. As the hot summer months went on, the film slowly fell apart like Jessica's mental condition. It really broke Jamie's heart. He really wanted a ride in that helicopter. You know, who's this guy think he is? He's got half his face in the movie Godzilla and all of a sudden he thinks he's a movie star. I told that stupid bald fuck not to get his hopes up. I mean, this is Jessica we're talking about. That girl is like a ceiling fan with no blades. Round and round and round, but giving off no breeze. What was going through Jessica's confused mind when she told Jamie John wanted him to be his helicopter cameraman? And does Anthony's metaphor of Jessica really make any sense? We asked Professor of Literary Studies and Rectal Behaviors at the Boner Academy Institute of Philadelphia to express his opinion. In this context, the metaphor is really left open to interpretation. The ceiling fan in this case can very well be Jessica, and the disability of not having fan blades expresses that she is incomplete. And being incomplete, not being able to give off a breeze, shows Jessica, the ceiling fan, as being incompetent. So yes, it does make sense. With the downfall of John's film due to Jessica's incompetency, things became strained between the closet couple. So Jessica sought out the psychiatric help of an older co-worker named Doc, who would supply her with illegal antidepressants. Hey, Jessica. As the months went by, Jessica's frequent pill-hungry visits became a staple of Doc's daily workday. He soon became infatuated with the loony pill-popping paralegal to the point where he was willing to do anything for her. I don't know why I'm being interviewed for this. I don't know Jessica that well, and I don't know this John person. I really just want to go home. She used the hell out of that guy. He took her to Las Vegas, Puerto Rico. Rome, Paris, Fiji. Hawaii, the Philippines. Maine, South Africa. The Cayman Islands. Not to forget, he bought her that fucking pug that she abandoned at Jamie's mother's house. I'm tired of being left with strangers. I mean, she's always living it up in tropical locations with different men. Jessica's free ride would soon end when she was confronted by an office coworker about her and Doc's exploits. All I did was hand her the Hanerson account. That girl has some problems. Her satellite dish is pointing to the wrong part of the sky, if you know what I mean. Not only would this lead to the dismissal of Doc, but it would signify the end of Jessica's steady drug habit and perhaps her sanity. As months passed, John and Jessica's relationship would only be put under more pressure when delusions of John's intimacy with an office co-worker began to flood Jessica's warped mind. Then why did Christina come up to me with the sausage in her hand? I don't know, maybe she likes sausage. Yeah, there was this one day she told me about this, this girl at work. Uh, she made a comment about sleeping with John. And this made Jessica not only suspicious, but uh, also obsessed with John's whereabouts at work. Um, so she would constantly check up on him, only to find him working. That bitch is psycho. Do we really need to go any further with this? That bitch is nuts. Gone, crazy. As Mona would say, she's brain dead. There was this one time John picked me up from a gig in the city. And the guy made so many short stops, I don't know how I didn't end up through the windshield of his Jeep. And then you had Jessica, who was just all giddy and, and giggling and all over John as he's swerving around pedestrians. Things finally exploded for the psycho paper filer when she got into a conflict with the co-worker she believes was sleeping with John. Oh my god, Jessica, I just got the best pepperoni for lunch. You are a man-stealing bitch! Ah! That unibrowed bitch is crazy. All I did was tell her about the foot-long subway I was having for lunch, and next thing you know, my beautiful, soft, succulent lips are kissing cheap office carpet. 
I wish I had a better mother. The office scuffle would eventually lead to the dismissal of Jessica's co-worker. Also gone were the overbearing suspicions of an affair with John Gage. Are you serious? I'm sorry. <laughs> with Jessica's co-worker out of the picture and John Gage all to herself, Jessica's twisted brain continued to sink deeper into delirium. During the filming of the Super Slacker series in Jessica's apartment, the cast and crew would come across a truly bizarre find. What the fuck is this? Does it talk? A doll with a striking resemblance to John Gage himself. It had to be the creepiest thing I've ever seen. John, and it would only get creepier uh, when Jamie's mom inquired about well, Jessica's yeah. precious toy. What do I do with him? Well, he's my doll. Wow. Okay. And um, I turn his head away when I sleep so he doesn't see me sleep. <laughs> she goes on to tell us that she keeps this doll by her bed. And when at night, when she's sleeping, she turns his head away so he's not looking at her. I don't know what's wrong with that boy. It has been months since we have last heard of John Gage. We can only believe that Jessica is becoming more tactful and stealthy in her efforts to conceal her lover. As it stands today, we still lack enough information to come to any substantial conclusion about the status of John Gage and Jessica O'Brien. There is, however, one thing we are certain of. Jessica is as crazy as a pack of wild, bare-ass baboons running loose in a busy emergency room with HIV-infected needles. This is Frankie Nofoot for Mystery Figure Unveiled.